Today we're reviewing a new server rack lithium iron phosphate by AO Lithium. And this is the rack right here. And we're gonna see how it compares to other server rack lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market today. Now I've had this connected to my system for three days now and there's already some things that I dislike. So first, each battery can discharge 100 amps. That means we should be able to run 400 amp load with this stack of batteries. But these are the cables it comes with and this is only a three gauge cable. So if you're trying to run on large loads like a 400 amp load which this is specced out for providing you will not be able to do it with the cables it comes with compare that to the SOK tower with a 4 aught gauge cable or the EG4 tower with two aught gauge cable and massive bus bars. Now I did email the company and ask them to make thicker cables and it shouldn't be impossible. So hopefully they actually do that. This should be large enough to be able to trip the overcurrent protection on all of these. If this tower is rated for 400 amps, do you think this can handle 400 amps if it's getting super hot at 130 amps? And I can't see an insulation temperature rating anywhere on it. It's in Chinese. So I don't know, I would not trust this. I think it should be much thicker. Over here, we have a four aught gauge cable going to a T-class fuse because I know this can create a massive amount of current and I wanna be able to stop that before it touches any other conductors in my system. So right now we have the main positive down here and the main negative up here. Let's say we doubled up the cable so we have two three gauge cables for positive and two three gauge cables for negative and then you connect these cables to your system, you're gonna run into some problems. Not only is it messy, but it's not ideal to have multiple conductors connected to an overcurrent protection device. And imagine the internal resistance value of these packs. This is a massive amount of current that can flow from four of these. Now, if you have one battery all by itself, these cables should work well, but anything more than that, and I don't think it's safe. Now, I've never used these connectors before, but I don't think I like them. I think there's an issue with how they share current across this pack when these are in parallel. So check this out. Today, the state of charge is 86, 85, 99, and 99%. Yesterday, these two were at 99% and these were at 75%. And I checked the current going between these and it seemed pretty consistent, but there's something funny going on with these connectors. They feel like high quality, but I don't think it's thick enough for this size of battery to be connected in parallel. And all other server rack towers have this problem, but not to this degree and to this inconsistency. And I have the positive connected here and the negative connected up here. So these should be lagging behind like it did yesterday. But today, these are lagging behind, which doesn't make a lot of sense. What they should do instead is use a bus bar or larger cables because I just do not like this configuration. These are way too small. These would be a great size if they were connected to a bus bar, but going from battery to battery with this is just not the best. Now these batteries are in an SOK server rack, but they actually came with these little racks that you put on each battery and then you stack them together. Now, first off, there's no hole right here to mount it to the ground with concrete anchors. All of these racks right here have holes designed so that you can mount it to the ground securely. This one, I'd be scared to drill such a large hole because it could affect the structural integrity. Next, I found it very difficult to slide these on each battery instead of just sliding it into a rack with a friend. This method takes a couple minutes. This does not. Also think about if you have a bad battery. In a server rack, you can just slide it out. And if it's the one on the bottom, it will only take seconds to slide out. If you have a bad battery on one of these, you're gonna have to deconstruct the whole tower just to get that bottom battery out. Also, the strength of this rack comes from the battery itself. So the battery on the bottom is gonna be compressed by the batteries on top. And I imagine that would impose a limit on the size of the tower. All I saw on the website is a max tower height of four batteries. So I'm guessing that's all you can do. On the server racks, there's no compression on each battery and you can buy them really tall. So yeah, that's a huge limiting factor of this system. So I didn't even use these. I just went straight for a SOK server rack and I slid them in. In a few minutes, I had a battery. Now, most of the issues I mentioned earlier could actually be solved if they use this server rack and then they use these connectors to connect each battery to a bus bar. And then from that bus bar to your system, you use a four aught gauge cable, you would have a fantastic setup. Now something I do like is the display interface and this is the exact same one that Trophy Server Rack Batteries uses. It shows you all the information you need, the maximum cell voltage, the minimum, 
the state of charge, the temperature sensors, the current, the voltage, everything important. And you don't have to switch through any menus to find the information. Next, the AO Lithium is very expensive and I don't think a lot of people are gonna buy it for this reason alone. It doesn't have any special features and it costs $2,000. The SOK has the same features, better terminals, and it's less by $250. And the EG4 with a screen is the same price as the SOK and again, it's still better than the AO Lithium in my opinion. There's a nice fuse in here, guys. So this is a very different configuration than other server rack batteries, and it amazes me that these cells are 100 amp hours. Look how small these are. And notice the bus bars they're using. These are the same types that they use in their other batteries, and they're very high quality. And the fuse they're using is rated for EVs. That is really nice. I prefer that over any circuit breaker on the market. The interrupt rating is 20,000 amps, so this is comparable to a T-Class fuse. We only see these types of fuse in very expensive packs, like a Fortress power battery, so that's nice to see. I'm, I'm pretty sure this will pass any type of UL conformal to any standard that they please. Now this is a pretty standard BMS that pretty much everybody is using. It has six temperature sensors, it has current regulation, and it has tons of safety features and communication protocols that you can load up. Overall, it's a very good design. I would not expect less from this company. Um, they do have their own specialty bus bars and that fuse. But besides that, is that fuse worth $250 more? I don't think so. It is a nice battery, but I hope they lower the price. Now, if this company sells this battery with thicker cables and maybe a server rack with a bus bar system, we'll do a capacity test and we'll do some pretty fun load tests. But for now, I think it's pretty pointless and I don't think anyone's gonna buy it at this price point. But if the price lowers and they fix all the issues, I'll be all over this thing and I'll see if you guys should actually buy one. But for now, I would avoid it personally. Now, if you disagree with me, please leave it in the comments section below and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.